Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, and today we're going to be rewiring a classic Spanish-American chandelier. In the 1960s, there was a housing boom in the United States, and without exaggeration, millions of new houses were built. And one thing that a lot of these houses had in common was a formal dining room. Now, this was just a room that was adjacent to the kitchen and the living room, big enough for a dining room table. And uh, these houses, by today's standards, were fairly modest. So you didn't have the grand hall dining room that you would see in a uh, big mansion, a country estate, or something like that. They were actually fairly small. Now, the chandelier that you would find over the table in some baron's mansion uh, simply would have filled the entire room. The scale was all wrong. So what they did was they had to come up with these basically miniature versions of big chandeliers. And then they would drill holes in all these spots like this and uh, cover the entire thing in these glass drops, which were known, of course, as crystals. So you can imagine the impression that this would make on a young couple buying their first home or maybe their second home as they walk into the formal dining room and there is this beautiful chandelier with all this glass hanging off of it, tinkling and uh, sparkling. Now, the reason I call this Spanish American is because the majority of them were made in Spain. Well, they came in various configurations. You could get four arms, six arms, sometimes even eight arms. And uh, the design motif was always acanthus leaves. This design here with these outer arms being kind of a cage, was just a place to put more crystals, is a little unusual, but uh, all the details and everything are basically the same as the rest of them that I've seen. Now rewiring this chandelier is fairly straightforward. And one of the main reasons that I'm rewiring this, besides the fact that everything in it is probably 60 to 70 years old, we look in here and get the light just right on it you'll see a screw head and that is what holds this center terminal into the bottom of the socket where this wire is connected right here and the problem is is that that screw can unscrew put a bulb in here if it's a little bit loose a little bit sticky whatever happens sometimes the screw will actually weld itself to the bottom of the bulb you unscrew it, and then suddenly this terminal and this wire is now completely loose. If it touches any part of the shell or any part of the frame, you've got a definite uh, electric shock hazard. So even though these were high-quality sockets when they were new, I just cannot leave them back in a chandelier when I'm putting it back together. Now in the body, we have our classic tape and twist connection which is another 20th century practice that we can't have today. I'm going to use the old wires to pull the new wires through. And that requires being able to hold this chandelier absolutely rigid. Because I just don't have enough hands to hold on to both ends of a wire and hold the chandelier still at the same time. I have thin pieces of plywood which have rare earth magnets on the back of them and carpet padding on the front, holds in place so I can clamp down my chandelier arm without worrying about it getting scratched or, or moving at the same time. And before I pull any wires, I like to use some beeswax furniture polish. Give it a, a little squirt. And that'll act as lubricant because the insides of these uh, arms can be kind of grainy and a little bit rough. I want it to slip through with as least effort as possible. Now the first thing I do is grab the other end of this white wire and pull it and try to get the white wire out of the arm. Which will make it just a little bit easier for the brown wire to 
pull the new wire through. Now to pull a wire with another wire, there's got to have a really good hard connection. And the only way to do that is with solder. If this was a straight pipe and plenty of room, you might be able to just kind of tie a knot, twist them together. But on something like this, experience tells me that uh, that's just not going to hold. So I'll put a good solder connection on here. Make sure it's got good penetration through both wires. And then I tug like hell because I definitely don't want this thing to come loose halfway through the arm. Then I grab the other brown wire, the other end of it, and I just start working it, pushing on one end, which gives it a little bit of slack, pulling on the other. Just a little patience, a little bit of tenacity. I'm going to give it a push here because that helps it go around that little hook right there at the base of the socket threads. And when you get wax all over your fingers, it doesn't hurt to get a pair of pliers to get a better grip on the wire. And eventually you'll have white wire at both ends. Now this is the last arm to be wired. And you'll notice these marks here. One wide mark, two narrow marks. That stands for seven feet. So I've wired six arms on this chandelier and the arms are only about four inches long and it's taken seven feet of wire very deceptive how much wire a chandelier actually consumes there will be a little bit of scrap but uh still comes out a little more than 12 inches per arm it's one good rule to remember is that nobody ever saved time or money by cutting a wire short now when i'm putting a chandelier or lamp back together all threaded parts get a coating of uh, blue thread lock. This is the stuff that will keep it from coming loose in normal use but can still be broken loose with just ordinary tools. They do have a red version of this and it has to have heat to make it let go. The only real stress this is going to be under is somebody changing a light bulb and you'd be surprised it's actually a little bit more stress than you might think. If that's the chief reason for sockets and lamps and everything like that coming loose is people changing light bulbs. Now before I put the wires on the sockets there's one very important step that can never be neglected. As you can see these wires are multi-strand. And multi-strand wires must never be put underneath the screw terminal. It's a violation of the National Electrical Code and just a dumb thing to do all the way around. The solution is just to take a little bit of solder and get the wire hot and just dab the tip of it. Doesn't need to be much, just enough to bond all those wires together in one piece. The reason for this is stranded wires under a screw simply splay out and get loose. Loose wires get hot. Plastic sockets that get hot, they fail. It's not really much of a fire hazard or anything like that. It's just a matter of how long you want this lamp or chandelier to last. Next up, you see we have a brass screw. If I look around the other side, we have a silver screw. And this is the little sermon I give every lamp or chandelier video. But uh, wire that is sold for lamps in the United States, one side is smooth, the other side has ridges. You can feel them even if you can't see them. The smooth side, that wire always goes under the brass screw. You wrap it around clockwise so that when you tighten the screw down, 
it pulls the wire under the screw instead of pushing it out. And I'll turn this around before that blue stuff sets up. So you can see, going to the silver screw, and we tighten it down. Give this a little squeeze with the pliers. And all I have to do is do the rest of them and I'm almost done with this job. Now it would be pointless to worry about which wire goes under which screw and then get down here and get them all mixed up. So to distinguish the smooth wires from the wires with ridges on them. I like to paint a black stripe. That way as I'm bundling them all together, I can keep them straight without having to sit there and rub my finger across every wire over and over again. Now I have all the smooth wires bundled together, the ridge wires bundled together, including the uh, brown one here, which is the trunk wire coming down the main pipe. And I'm gonna solder them all together. All connections in the secret underground laboratory are soldered. Do not use wire nuts. Do not use any kind of mechanical clamps. And certainly don't just twist the wires and wrap them in tape. That's just totally 20th century for me. Now when the solder cools, take a pair of pliers and squeeze down any sharp points. Because there will be some. That feels nice and smooth. And then, to cover it up, I use shrink tubing, which is a peculiar kind of plastic that shrinks when it gets hot. Slip it down over here. Hit it with a little torch, and it just shrivels up. And for a little bit of secret underground laboratory overkill, I always put a little band around the end like this, which gives an extra layer of protection over the end, which is the part that's most likely to rub through if there was any kind of chafing or something like that. This goes down in here. Now all I have to do is go find uh, six light bulbs and uh, see if this thing works. Well, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And I thank you for sitting through this video about this classic piece of uh, American decor. I hope that uh, you will like and subscribe if you haven't already. I try to put out one video a week, either on uh, lighting or some kind of furniture repair. Hope to see you again next week. And again, thank you for watching.